Welcome, Wolfpack and friends. It is Mythical Friday. We are here at North Carolina State University. I am Julie Swan, Department Head of the Edward P. Fitz Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering. It's graduation day here on campus. We are so excited for all of our graduates who are walking across those stages in those rows. It's fantastic. Today, I am here with Link Neal, who is our commencement speaker for today when our undergraduates walked across that stage. You may also know Link from his extensive work on YouTube and writing books and doing all kinds of exciting things as part of the duo, Rhett and Link, both of whom are NC State graduates. Your speech today was fantastic. I mean, you, you like it? Yeah, I did. You blew it out. <laughs> I mean, I there's, a lot of fun. there's no way Rhett's speech will be as good. I, I, it just is. It can't be, can it? I think that we will have a discussion about it in my notes. <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah. you brought it. You, you brought it all. You had the message, you had the storytelling, you got the engagement from the audience. It was all there. But there are, and I've been watching some of your shows. I've, I've gone and I've watched Mythical uh, Morning Show that you have, and I've watched some of your written link videos. I've, I've seen some of your music videos, seen lots of different things. Yeah. There's one question that we have to address today. Okay. And, you know, you're representing the industrial engineering profession. And there have been a couple of videos where I was a little bit worried about some of your mathematical skills. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to make sure that it's okay for you to keep your degree. Is that a thing? Can it be taken away? Taken away? There are always processes. I don't know. But, but, but. So if I demonstrate that I can no longer do s semi simple math, even though I've given the commencement address and I have a bona fide degree, I it could still all be stripped away if I continue with the math shenanigans. Mm. Well, if you if you push me on it, maybe I'll just say we won't promote your industrial engineering degree quite as much. Yeah, so, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, but, but, but let's just see what you know. I, I bet you know more than you more than you admit to sometimes. Am I about to? Receive a math test? A very small one. A very small. It's not going to be bad. Okay. okay. Here's here's the first question. And and by the way, I asked artificial intelligence to uh, to help me out today. So uh, I have the correct answer on uh, lots of different things. Okay. So let's see if you can do this one. This is one that, that came up in one of your Good Mythical Morning segments. One minus two thirds. That's right. That's right. Can one minus see? two thirds. Yeah. Can you do that one? So two thirds. Mm -hmm. is less than one. It is. And one is three-thirds. Correct. I'm going to say that that is one-third. That is correct. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, okay. yeah that, that one is, uh, that's our, that's that's our the entry hardest level. One. No, it's not. It's That's the entry-level question, right? Okay. So, how, how, you know what? I don't want to know how many there are. Three. Three. No, no not to worry. Not to worry. <clears throat> you, you can do this. Okay. I believe so you. I am one third of the way through. You are, in fact. Very, very well played. Very well played. All right. Next thing. Can you draw a normal distribution? <laughs> I'll say a standard normal. Can I draw a normal distribution? And you're something of an artist. So um, I think that, you know. But it should be reasonable. Um... I think I can do it with my eyes closed. Oh, even better. Let's yeah. see. So. I'll take your time. Very nice, very nice. That is a lovely normal distribution. Is that good? Well done, well done. That's good. I'm very good at normal. Yeah, yeah. I'm the most normal mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. no, really? that you'll ever meet. You're not out on the tails? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. This is, this is me. I don't think this so. Is, this is me no, somewhere no. in here. No, I don't think so. Okay. You think Brett would say that? Um, let's leave him out of this. All right, fine. We'll leave him out of this. All right. So now I am going to get to the hard one uh, here. And this one is a bit harder. And if you don't okay. get it, I'm not sure that we can take a degree away, but I would just have to. Does it involve know, a logarithm? No, it does not. Okay, good. No, but I need it then. Oh. Because I think, that, I mean, oh. I could give it to you in words, but I think it would be better if I gave it to you in written in its geometry, if you will. What we have here is a row vector and a column vector. Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah. So the row vector and the column vector. Exactly, exactly. But I just thought maybe I would 
draw it out as well. So, so then, so so you know how to do that um, fundamental. Yeah, uh, of course we have a row vector and a column vector. And this is a trick question. And I knew that. Okay. It's Good. Because the equals actually goes over here. You can put the equals. Over what you've done is you've given me. The question, and I've given you the answer. Oh, are you? Okay, all right. There it is. Oh, okay, all right. Well, now I'll, I'll that, that is one. correct. Okay. There's, a, there's an actual numerical uh, value. So I'll there, there is a there's a. I don't oh, yes. know. Well, the hint was it's a trick question, and I know it's a numerical value. There's another hint. Do you want one? I think it's no. I'm not gonna make it. Okay. Um, I think it's um, I think that's it. Very interesting. It's a I know it's a matrix. That would have gotten you half credit but not full credit because Right, cuz I'm all, but I'm only halfway done. All right. But no, but that is actually incorrect because that is a column vector type of row vector. But I've given you the row vector as a column. Oh, vector. right. Yeah, so I yes. had it this way. <laughs> Oh, very well. Yes, you did it, in fact. Well done. But right. That so now that's correct. Bonus points. So is this now correct? Geometry. Now that. That, I believe, is correct. <laughs> right. See? Yeah. Okay. So we'll there take it is. that. We'll but take but that. if this were what you wanted, mm -hmm. then. A hint that you still don't want to hint. I want a hint for Do your you, question, yeah. even Do though I'm answering. Do you use uh, Excel much? All the time. Oh, some yeah. Product. Oh, yeah. Like, um, you ever done a sum product? The formula? Yeah, you, you, you like. At symbol sum bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what would the sum product calculation? What is it? What? It's like oh. red had some apples and link had some apples. Okay, all right. How many pieces of fruit are there? All right, I got it. I got it. <laughs> it is in fact two. It yes. is not. There it is. One. So you got there. Yeah. Right. You, you had some fundamentals sitting in the, the background. It's just been a while. Right. That's fine. See, look at that. Good. We'll take it. Three for three. Yeah, we'll take it. Three we'll for take three it. for me. Well, I can keep say. my degree. Yeah, he can keep his degree. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Now, we will uh, have some more serious questions and some that. You, you want me to sign this? I know. I, that would be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sell it on you. <laughs> Actually, I'll just sell the NFT of it. And oh, right. Yes, great. Thank All you. Those still are a thing. Ian says no, that I'm not going to sell the NFT of it. Not without my permission. <laughs> well, we didn't, you know, I have power in this <laughs> dynamic as well. <laughs> you do. You do. It's true. You do. It's not just your your degree. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, so, so, in a little bit more serious, why did you choose industrial engineering for your degree? Why did I choose industrial engineering? Um, as opposed to any other field of engineering. Sure. Um. Well, I chose engineering in general because Rhett's parents said they weren't going to pay for film school. Mm. I mean, that's really what that's happened. Okay. That's fine. And um, I was pretty much, I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to go to film school either. Because mm -hmm. um, we, we did have, we had this idea that we wanted to be filmmakers. We had written a screenplay. We had, we had talked about it. Mm -hmm. But then we were so good at as you can tell, we were so good at science mm -hmm. that, um, you know, like, I think it was the counselor that said, you know, you should, you should go into engineering, yeah. so math and science. Mm -hmm. And then um, the parents were willing to approve this endeavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think whatever my class was, it was like um, the engineering introduction class. Like they, you know, everybody comes through and tries to, Tries yeah. to convince you to to, yeah. to matriculate into into their thing, sure. and it was Clarence. Uh -huh. um, Clarence came and spoke about industrial engineering, and he had this. He just had, you know, he was he was a pretty charismatic guy. And I was like, I like this guy. He is, you know. Um, and he said, you know, industrial engineering is the is the only engineering field that works with people. Like that's, he said, I don't know, I'm, I'm not quoting him, but that was what I took away. I was like, I like people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to not work with people. Mm -hmm. um, 
What I didn't realize is that he was saying that industrial engineering is the only form of engineering where they fire people. <laughs> right? Okay. You know, it's, I've never fired anybody. Because you know, you, did, you, did, you, were, you could say, well, we don't need that job anymore. Mm. Mm. Did that sour you? I don't think we need that job anymore. Mm. Um, no, I'm, I, it turned out that even though I thought I really resonated with the people part of it, mm -hmm. that my brain was really wired for, as a, I mean, I'm a perfectionist. I, I like, I'm very process oriented. So like all of that really started to resonate in terms of like efficiencies, you know, um, if you look at like the Enneagram personality profile, mm -hmm. I'm a one, which is like a perfectionist that, you know, it's um, just always wanting to tweak things, always wanting to know that I'm doing it right. Even when I was talking today in my commencement address, it was a, you know, I was talking about this illusion of certainty mm -hmm. that there's like, I would always approach everything as like, there's one correct answer. And there's a best way to do every single thing. So industrial engineering really resonated with me. And then I was, so once I got my degree, I've spent the rest of my life trying to deconstruct um, how, how regimented it was. I, because I really thrived in it. I was like, yes, I love having the specific answers. Mm -hmm. But then you move, you know, it's, that's not true across every area of life. They, even if you think there's a best way to do something, you don't need to tell everybody. <laughs> that's that's the one thing I had to unlearn. <clears throat> now that I know the best way to do every single thing, mm -hmm. and I do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everybody everybody can't take it. Mm, it's true. Everybody can't take it. It's true. So that's what that's what I had to unlearn. Mm -hmm. Hey, if somebody else is washing the clothes, they're doing it right. Ha! <laughs> no, well, actually. If it were only that simple, mm -hmm. right? I mean, how many times have you reloaded the dishwasher? Not very many. Because really? I, I, I try to remember. Okay, you've, you're, you've grown too. Oh, yes. No, I try. It's a, but it's, you know, it's a, and my husband is also an industrial engineer. So, you know, we both have to keep this in mind. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, to answer my own question, I would say three times this month. I've rearranged the dishwasher. Okay. It's just nobody else knows how to do it. It's true. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, this actually, let's explore that a little bit. Because one of my questions was, um, well, before I ask the question, I feel like you're an industrial engineer in your soul. And, and you've heard me say that a couple of times. And, and I, I have gathered this from your videos, your books, and a little bit of talking with you. But I, I really feel like you're an IE in your soul. But, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So can you give us a couple of examples of how it manifests in a in a day-to-day -day life? Process. I think every I I am just obsessed with well, you know, if I especially when it comes to the things that I do every day, like the routine type stuff. I like routines, but I'm always trying to tweak it. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's I know exactly how much time everything takes mm -hmm. and if something starts to give that i've got to take from somewhere else because i still got to take lando to school mm -hmm. so i've got all this stuff that i need to do before i take him to school mm -hmm. and he'll he will not be happy if he's if he's late and you know what he shouldn't be happy mm -hmm. that's, that's my commitment to him mm -hmm. so i got all my stuff that i do and it's you know every little bit i i'm very engaged mm -hmm. i have like a hot brain when it mm -hmm. comes to everything that I'm doing, brushing my teeth. Like I've got a system for everything. I mean, if you, anything, I got a system, like I make my smoothie every single morning. I make it the exact same way every morning. And uh, now I don't have to think about it. And now I can use my brain power to think about something else in the super limited amount of time that it, it it's miraculous how quickly I can make a smoothie. Because you've made it I'm very almost, efficient. I'm, yeah, I've almost removed myself from the process. <laughs> I like I, I I might need to lay myself off. That's how efficient. Yeah. I'm thinking of Wallace and Gromit. Making a smoothie has become for me. <laughs> um, so I really think it's everything, mm -hmm. everything. And so 
the unlearning is saying, okay, honey, just just chill out a little bit. Just chill out a little bit. Yeah. So so let's talk about um, how IE might intersect with the career path where you yep. are. You know, and, and most of our listeners may know, but there may be some who don't. Red and Link have a very successful uh, YouTube presence. I believe I saw over 18 million subscribers for Good Mythical Morning, which has been running for 12 plus years, over 30 million subscribed across multiple platforms, and you're expanding in a number of different ways. Correct me if I'm wrong on, on any of that. But I, don't, I don't remember the numbers. It's, it's good enough. I, we're good. Yeah, I'm done with numbers. That's the, <laughs> that's the part of engineering that I've let go of. Like when you're like giving me a hard time about the math, it's just like, this numbers don't really stick in my brain. Like I cannot tell you, but well, I can tell you how old my kids are. I can kind of, I can, I can tell you their birth dates if I really, if you give me a minute. Well, I have, I have to focus on that too. Yeah, that's a hard. I, thing, right? Yeah, because I have so many that are so close to kid. The birth dates okay, are I feel so good close about that. together. Yeah, so that's fine. But what about like a return on investment analysis? You're thinking about. Working with a new star, I, I saw that news. Um, yeah, yeah, and and so is there something like a return on investment analysis that might be done, but not by not you? that I do. Not that I you. mean, okay. a lot of it is more on instinct. I think you know, it's um, we bring people on our team to do mm-hmm. the things that we're either not as good as they would be at, mm-hmm. or um, we don't want to do. Okay, and so that's part of it. But I think, I think. Even when it comes to like my creativity, I'm more of a um, finisher and Rhett's more of a starter. Like he's more of a big ideas kind of guy and I'm more of like implement this okay. kind of guy. Like okay. get into the weeds of the process okay. and like see it to completion. So mm-hmm. more, more of the detail side of it. Okay. Um, we, I mean, we both do both, but so yeah. it's, it's a generalization, okay. but... I think we kind of we fall into those roles, like in, in terms of our strengths. Mm-hmm. If if you pick it up, then I can run with it, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And I I do think that I've always had this mentality, like a mathematical approach to creativity, mm-hmm. just feeling like there is an answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have this idea for a video. I want to like there's a there's a certain point when I know when it's when it's clicked and when it hasn't yet. Mm-hmm. It's like, is everything here for this thing? Um, have we found the answer? Mm-hmm. So even though, you know, creativity is so open-ended and it can be, you can take things anywhere. For me, taking it where I want to take it, I feel like I know when I've got that answer, when, mm-hmm. when I've arrived at it, mm-hmm. you know? Interesting. So I, I think... As a perfectionist. Yeah, I think I play. I I think I. That's where my engineering comes into play. Okay, so let's talk about creativity because you know I personally believe that, that lots of people can use creativity in their job, even when they're oh, yeah. not you know creators of content in, in yeah. the way that the two of you are. So, do you think creativity can be learned? Yeah, I think that. Um, I'm still learning a lot. I mean, everything I do, you just try to learn something. Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay, I gave that speech. and so I know what I would do differently. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, so, I mean, there's a craft there. So it's like learning that. But can creativity in general be learned? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you learned it. You, you know, some people will naturally, like, if they want to write a script, like, let's just say it is something more traditional like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can learn how to do that. Um, and you can get better at it. I think you can get better at working with your own mind and with your own heart to say, what is it that I want to say or do or play with or accomplish? And if you, when you experiment, and I think that's, that's kind of the message I was trying to get today was that like, err on the side of doing something. You know, I think when you're doing things, it, it's, it's a creative act. Even if it's like, you know, if you're, you know, if I'm sweeping my floor, you know, it can be a creative act mm-hmm. in the way you do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, th- 
I think it's more of a mindset, but absolutely you can mm-hmm. you can learn. So if you can learn creativity or some aspect of it, are there um, thoughts or suggestions you might have for our students or our graduates in how they might um, incorporate more creativity in what they do, whether or not they are in entertainment? I think when you bring your whole self to something, you know, it's, I think that's important. If it's a hobby or if it's your work, it's like, you know, it's, I remember when I first started working, uh, as an industrial engineer, I felt like there were parts of myself that I couldn't bring to the work environment, like just to be more charismatic or like, you know, to, to really foster the relationships. It was more about like, well, I got to do the job and I got to make sure I don't screw up. Um, I think when you bring more of your complete self to whatever you're doing, I think there's, there's just more opportunity for creativity because it's, it can, creativity can be anything, you know, it doesn't have to be artistic. Um, but I do remember there was a number of people who went really far and decorated their cubicles. Like that was a thing. It's one thing to have like family pictures, maybe a motivational poster or two, but like, I mean, if you got if you got pinatas hanging up, if you if you've turned a bedspread, if you turn your cubicle into some sort of like a, um, you know, a, a a pillow fort. Well, I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. We got it. We got to get some work done here. You know, it can go too far. <laughs> Although I could imagine you working in a pillow fort. I know. It'd be fun. It would be fun. Um, yeah, you got to be careful how you hold things up in these type of forts oh you know if you put a like my grandma put a brick on the sheet that was holding our fort up and then it like the brick fell on my head and i had to get like six stitches oh that is that is pretty bad did that really happen that really happened everything i say really happens i can believe that my life is stranger than fiction (laughs) well maybe we should i know you said blue red out of it but we can call in red if we need to think about we know construction and structural integrity no no we don't okay all right that's fine too so um, are there some big global problems that you think industrial engineering should be addressing? No. Okay. We just need All to right. hang it up. <laughs> big problems. Yeah. I don't know. What would you, you what would you have if some industrial engineers solve? Yes, I, I think there are lots of them. But I'm sure there are. Yeah. I'm sure there are so many. Well, I mean you can think about um, disasters and supply chain logistics. You can think about food and water and the role of operations and process there. That's good. You can think about climate change, what it's going to do to networks, and then how do we allocate resources, and how do we, you know, really take these really tough problems and figure out how to make the, the it, as cost-effective as it can be. Uh, we've got infectious disease, there, of course, right, and that's an area where industrial engineers sometimes work. Those are just a few, but those are, those are mine, uh, you know, you, you may have others. I don't, but I like those. I'm going to take all of those. <laughs> you can take all of them. That's, I'm going to take all of them. That's fine. Advertise it. Tell other people to work on it, too. There's a lot. Uh, industrial engineers sh- should be everywhere. I think so, too. We're, we, yeah, I got in trouble the other day. I went to a, um, I went to a concert with my son. This is a big concert. This is like a, uh, Rolling Loud Festival. Have you heard of this? Well, I, I saw a little bit of your discussion of this. I believe it was on Air Biscuits. Big hip hop festival. Um, three days, f- multiple stages, people just clamoring to see these artists. And my son was like, I want to go, I want to go to this. And so for his birthday, I was like, I'll get you a ticket. But only if you let me get a ticket, because okay. I kind of want to go too. Mm-hmm. And, um, at a certain point in the evening, I had met back up with him and his group of friends and we were waiting in a food truck line for some hot chicken Mm -hmm. and I couldn't help but notice that the queue was forming directly out from the truck and then blocking the entire thoroughfare of traffic and I couldn't help myself I couldn't help myself I would just I was like excuse me everybody Um, (laughs) if we could just take this line and move it to the side, then everybody who's walking through doesn't have to 
walk through our line and um, no response from anyone. No eye contact from anyone, including my son. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think especially my son. And I was like, well, maybe it's because they're not hearing me. Maybe I just need to reach out and touch the shoulder, gently tap the shoulder of the woman who's closest to me. Maybe I can at least get through to her. If you would just move this way, ma'am, then the thoroughfare, and and before I could finish, she cut me a look so sharp that I felt like I, my eyeballs were bleeding. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm just going to be in line. <laughs> and my son didn't say anything to me, but he, the next morning, uh, Christy had heard about it. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, dad kind of, dad was touching people in the food truck line. He's like, no, I wasn't, I, I tapped somebody on the shoulder. Excuse me, tap. I wasn't touching people mm -hmm. in the food truck line. Uh, I, I had, I was right. I had the, I had the best idea. You did. You for did. everybody. Yeah, yeah. Just, but nobody wanted to. Be told what to do. Yeah, no, it's true. So, so I spend a lot of time thinking about how to get people and organizations to do to what change. you want. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah to, to, true. to let me control them. <laughs> it's true. It, there's, an, there's an art to it. There is. Um, sometimes yeah. it's information. It's tough. To, it's, it's tough to know. Sticks. It's tough to have the answers. It is. But it's, it's more than just knowing the answers. It's getting it across. Get it across. But it, it's not only even communication. I think. I think it's understanding the incentives of the other people or groups, right? Understanding yeah. the motivations as well, not just the communication. Do you want me to buy your hot chicken? Well, get the line over there. That, that would be Everybody right. in the line, I'm buying the chicken. As long as the line moves, I'm in charge. That would do How about it. that? That would do That it. would probably do Don't it. Don't you think it would? But they wouldn't like me. No, I wouldn't have wouldn't. won their hearts. So, so how could you have done it and, and they like you? Do you know? Uh, clearly not. Well, and do I you think, know? Well, I, I have ideas. I spent a lot of time working within an organization. Either tell me or don't. Well, you didn't ask me in the beginning. You just asked, do I know? Okay. <laughs> Will you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could talk about it, but, but this interview It's not is, a simple answer, huh? Well, there are different ways. So, you know, the hot chicken line, rather than telling the entire group, I might go up to someone in the line and say, hey, do you think it would be better if we had the line going that way to let oh, them buy build, build some consensus. Yeah, there's there's that. That's one approach, mm. right? Because people, And do you, do you think you would want to be the one to yell at everybody and tell them? And then you're, then you're, do, yeah, would you be willing you're to empowering do someone else that, to that's true too, take you the have fall. To, you have to pick the right people for doing this because some people are better at it yeah. than other people. Right? Yeah. Some people are just good at motivating a group. So there are, and you know, I don't know how your organization is run, Maybe but some companies, <laughs> some companies have more of a um, a structure where you know you're in charge and you get a lot of things done. Right. Because you and Rhett want them done that way, and, and you have to come to an agreement with him and maybe your closest team. But in my world, I don't tell faculty what to do. That, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah, way. yeah. I mean, we're at a point with Good Milligan Morning that we, we've we empowered the team to put us through the ringer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to do things that they're excited about. Because yeah. they don't just want to do things just for just yeah. just for us. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel that. Yeah, well, and, you know, a lot of times when industrial engineers graduate and they do have great ideas and they have to struggle through how do I get someone else to buy into this idea and change yeah. what they're doing yeah. and not feel threatened and, and you know whatever it might be um, in that work environment of whatever type. Right. So it's I something think the, psych the psychology of all of it is, you know, the interpersonal right. um, manipulation. Even I didn't, you know, I, I wouldn't use that word. But, but no, you wouldn't. No, I, neither would I. I didn't. Maybe. Alignment. Yeah, you know, like it's fascinating. I, before I started my current job, um, I went back and the first time read Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence oh. People. And I found it very interesting because it, it's really all about people things. And there are yeah. a handful of 
lessons, but what it really does is have all of these different examples that can help one internalize those. And, you know, it's the kind of book you could go back and read again. And so that's something that maybe our graduates might want to think about as they're entering a workforce, if they're facing those kinds of challenges. Yeah, are so, there, totally. Are there books that, that you like that, that um, you would recommend to others? Um, not on that front. No, it doesn't have to be that front. I mean, it, what you said definitely reminded me of, like, as my experience as like a new engineer, right. and it, yet so much of my energy was was um, devoted to not screwing up. Mm-hmm. And it's you know, it's just it's not it's not that doesn't set you up for to have the most rewarding experience. Right. You know, when it's, when you're just, you know, you're kind of driven by fear. Mm. And when you're, you know, when you're just getting started, mm. it's totally understandable. I'm not, you know, I I know why I felt that way. I know why I wore a button up shirt that didn't have a collar. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't do that now, but I had to learn the hard way. Yeah. You know, it's like shirts are better with collars if they're <laughs> button up shirts. I don't know why I did that. Mm. I think that was my first problem. Mm. So uh, I know you asked about books, but I'm no, talking okay. about shirts. Yeah, that's okay. And that but, ma- but, because but it matters. But you, and you're talking about your job, which that was a particular kind of organization, IBM, right? Big yeah. company that has a lot of history. I could imagine that there would have been other environments where you had a very different feeling in, in terms of your experience yeah. as you went into that workplace and, and how dynamic it might be or how much influence you might have as a yeah. as a new graduate. What do you think the top three jobs are that are industrial engineers get these days? Um, or, or three good examples, like popular jobs of industrial engineers. Um, conveyor belt rearranging. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, what about AutoCAD cleaner upper? Not anymore. What about um, AI did better? Yeah. What about? Uh, Although it wasn't as funny. Hard hat polisher. <laughs> Not anymore. No, I don't know um, that anybody ever had that one. What? A, yeah. What about? Um, What about something in, in in the medical field? Lots of IEs in the medical field. That one's reasonable. That's health, not health one of the systems. three? It's, it's in the it's health in the systems. Six. Yeah, sure. I'll in the top three? No, not top three. Okay, give me one of the top three. See if I can get the other two. Data analytics. Data analytics. Right? Decision making, but driven by, we have so much data these days. Forbes estimated that the data from the last two years is more than the data in all of human history that yeah. has been recorded, right? I mean, just astounding to think about. Yeah. And somebody's got to learn from that data and make decisions. And so a lot of industrial... It's a very broad... It is. It okay. Is. Okay. So, so that's, that's really one. broad. So I got two more that are broad like that. Does one of them have to do with zoos? No. Okay. No, no. So there's one broad one and then... What about, what about um, lasers? Nothing with lasers. Um, all those could be fine. Um, what about all the different things you can do with WD-40? Oh, there are a lot. Oh, my there? gosh. That, duct tape and Sharpies. Yeah. Duct tape, not so much anymore. Mm, right? I Trust me. Not anymore. Okay. All right. WD-40, definitely. I still carry so some I, duct tape I think and it's Sharpies. Like, so I think it's, what do I do with WD-40? Is no, that one of them? No. No. Okay, give me the other one. Maybe I'll, get I'll give the third you. One. Well, I don't even know if there's a third one, but but another one that's really big is you said top three. You don't I even know. know. Well, I have a list of ten. So I did, if okay. you had gotten anything in the top ten, I would have given it to you. <laughs> okay. So what's the, what's another one? Consulting. Oh, of course. Well, yeah, of course. Right, management okay. consulting, but just but, swoop in, give an opinion, and an invoice. <laughs> get out of it. I well, I love the idea of consulting. I know because it's just it's just answers. And then you're out. Well, but there is a, you have to understand the system in which you're working. You have to understand the problem, right? The problem yeah, you got to you you get, you you get, you get your hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. And it's, there's a lot of variety in that kind of career. So I, I can just that. see it, that one appealing to you. Yeah, I can do that. I, I, I'll, I'll consult. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'll and consult can, on, 
on a I'll go ahead and reason. give you another one. Process engineer would certainly be among the, the oh. top ten. Manufacturing, supply chain, certainly. Certainly, and, and those are ones right out of college. What do you think our graduates are doing 30, oh. 30 years out? 30 years out. Um, TikTok influencer. Uh, one. Right. Um, That's one out of 8,000? I don't know. Probably not quite that. Next level WD-40 uh, analysis. Could be. Is that no, it? No, but it's more like you. It could be anything. It could be anything at this point. Director. President. VP. It just That's what our graduates are doing 30 yeah. years out. It's not, you know, they, they move different pathways, right? They go healthcare, manufacturing, energy, finance, entertainment, but they're becoming presidents, directors, VPs. We did this analysis recently. And I also asked the question to AI, and it did pretty well at that one. So. That makes sense. I mean, it's like so when you, you think about, like, I definitely think about, like, Everything that we, I think we have like, we might have 120 people working for us now. Mm. You know, when you have that yeah. many people, I mean, it's one thing to produce content. Like, okay, we got to have systems. Yeah. We got to have systems mm -hmm. so that this works, so that everybody is on the same page and knows where they plug in mm -hmm. to everything and when they hand things off. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the quality control of you know, of, of what we put out into the world, you know, it's okay. Is this the version that we approved that's mm -hmm. been uploaded to YouTube that people are watching this morning? You know, it's mm -hmm. like, um, and even on another level of not just what are we making, but what kind of culture are we building? Mm -hmm. There's a number of processes associated with building teams, building camaraderie, building culture. And you start, to, you know, it's like we find ourselves in this position of being CEOs, but we just, ins I instinctively do it from an engineering perspective, which is, you know, anything that you're going to do, any people that you're going to rally together, any common goal that you want to go after, um, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a better way to do it, right? Yeah. Um, so it totally makes sense from a. And then you've got the self-selection into industrial engineering. So you thought it was because of people. So you get those folks. You yeah. get people who say, well, I want engineering because it's great for critical thinking and jobs, but I also want some business. And so mm -hmm. are there things that you know, IE opens up? Or they say, I yeah. want flexibility, right? You know, I, I want to be able to do different things over my career. So we also get those kinds of people choosing IE. And then you can see how they would... Be people yeah. who might end up in these roles, no matter what industry they start in. It's the best, isn't it? It is, right? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, if I had gone to uh, film school like I wanted to, uh, I, I'm glad I did. I, I mean, like, are you really? Yeah, it's like I, you don't really need to go to film school to make films. Mm. Pretty sure, and of course, that's what my daughter's doing. <laughs> I mean, you're paying my, I'm paying my daughter's tuition yeah. to do this thing that I'm saying you don't really need to do, but like... Well, yours was not a guaranteed pathway from from the pathway that you took no. back into... Right. Yeah, she... It's she, a little she's, more predictable. She's, she's going for her passion, and I want to support that, but um, for me, you know, it was this undulating path that got me to where I am. If I'd have been in film school, I, I just... I don't know. I think I would have gotten... I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? So um, that made me think of another question. It, I'm an academia department head. What would you think that I could take from what you've seen in the world back into academia? Well, I'm just asking for ideas. You're an idea. Well, you okay. said. All right, I'll give you some. You, you, just some ideas. In, or if you like I, to ruminate I, on it, you can ruminate on it. I think so. the thing that we've always done is been students of the next thing mm. you know i know you like to talk about the chat gpt and ai you just i mean you practically you know you, you haven't shut up about it all day look at you you're just obsessed with it and i think that's awesome because i mean that you know it's even for me with 
how rapidly things are changing and developing with AI, and just to use that as an example, it's overwhelming to me. Mm -hmm. And it could be that the type of thing where it's like, is this where I'm out? Is this where I'm checking out from being engaged and trying to figure out what's happening next? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yes, it was mostly in the world of digital entertainment that things were so rapidly changing that we felt like, okay, what's this thing called Twitter? Should we be on that? What's this thing called TikTok? Should we be on that? How do how is this reaching people? Mm -hmm. What's the intersection between what we want to say and who we are and what people are wanting and, and the tools that people are using? So I think just this tenacious appetite for what's changing and what's next has to be a huge overlap between what we do. Absolutely. I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't already know because again, you have not shut up about this chat GPT stuff the whole day. Well, can I tell you why? There oh yeah, keep talking about it. Yeah, please. No, I'm talking about the process now then. Okay. It's different. The process and the product are not the same. Do you agree with my advice though? It was a compliment. Oh, thank you. It, it didn't sound like a compliment. I'm just giving you a hard time. No, it, 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 it definitely is. You know, it's like, there's a temptation to say, oh, oh I'm out. I'm not going to figure this yeah. thing out. Yeah. But, well, you, sure. but I don't want to be that person. Well, let me talk about that. So I do agree with what you said. And I can tell you that being in my role, I am looking for the next thing all of the time. Yeah. Because we're making decisions about hiring that are not short-term decisions. We're putting things into curriculum. We're making partnerships. And everybody's doing this. No one is standing still. So we really have to stay abreast of things. So I... Feel yeah. like that's part of my job and part of perhaps my skill set that I can bring to to the table for that. But the second reason is that I am also intentionally modeling it for other people. So I'm modeling it for the people in my household. I'm modeling it for our students and alumni and parents. I'm trying to make it more accessible by saying, "Hey, look, there are all different kinds of ways that you can use this too." And let me get you started in thinking about how AI might intersect with what you're doing in a positive or negative way, but opening that box a little bit to help others go down that path. And especially in this case, my stakeholders, which are largely in the industrial engineering community. Yeah. We talk a lot about curiosity as like a, a core value of what we do. It's like, I mean, we do a bunch of just dumb stuff, but it's like, well, I mean, what does 100-year-old canned coconut taste like? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I need to taste it. You know, so, but it's, it's, modeling, it, it's modeling curiosity in a ridiculous and entertaining way, but it is a value in what we do. That it's like that's, that's part of the vibrance of life. And if you, you know, I'm the type of person, my brain, I can get really overwhelmed and I have this, I want to withdraw. Mm. I want to like, oh, whether that's turn off the news or I'm not going to read this article that somebody sent me or I'm not going to try out. I'm not going to go to the chat GPT website and start conversing with them. Yeah. You know, you know, and I don't, you know, so I know that about myself and I know that I have a value. That I want to overcome that. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to be invigorated by information and not be overwhelmed by it. Mm. That's a hard thing for me to do, actually. Mm. But it's about mm. interesting. Well, so sometimes I do go down a, a, a rabbit hole, if you will, for one yeah. of these topics, like like AI and, and some others. In fact, I wouldn't say it's a large hole. Maybe it's a medium sized hole. Those are the best. Oh yeah, they are. In fact, I, I did watch. Uh, so. Um, a while ago, I watched lots of your videos when I learned that you were alumni of NC State. And then there was a period of time. You only I watch IE Entertainment. No, no. But I okay. I do. I watch different things for different kinds of reasons. At that point okay. in time, I went down something of a medium-sized hole where I delved into it for a while. and yeah. tried to get to know that space and what you were doing and also learning about the the new things that, that were being done in entertainment uh, on YouTube and other platforms. So, and then I searched recently and I thought, oh, well, let's go and look at what's what they've got. And, and I saw the video. We dug a medium-sized hole. What'd I believe it was 26 minutes. 
I clicked on it. I watched the whole thing. And yeah. Not only did I watch the whole thing, I think I listened to the entire Ear Biscuits episode <laughs> deconstructing the whole thing afterwards. <laughs> And I 26 was minutes to, to dig a medium-sized hole. I a, laughed out loud. Though. It's an incongruent amount of time. It is. And so when I first watched it, I thought, <laughs> this is something like a mockumentary. Right? And then I decided, no, it was not a, after I watched the Ear Biscuits episode, it was not a mockumentary. It was a docu-mockumentary. Okay. Because you were documenting the process. And there was definitely a lot of satire whether it was intentional or not intentional, right? Satire about the whole internet thing. And, and you talked about in this, uh, this in the Ear Biscuits episode. Yeah. And I was really thinking about comedy and the science of comedy as I was watching this because I was laughing out loud. And the entire thing is about the two of you digging a medium-sized hole. Yeah. And, and failing. Yes. Yes. And, and well, the final hole, I, I might have done it differently. That's mm-hmm. a different story. But but I found the Ear Biscuits episode very interesting where you where you talked about the process and, and you know I could um, and I'm not sure if the episode fully deconstructed the way it unfolded because I think you were waiting maybe for more people to see it so you mm-hmm. didn't yeah. reveal too much. But it was really interesting from the standpoint of both comedy and process and reflection on modern entertainment. So I thought it was fascinating. There was a lot of process in there. There was. You know, if when you want to really dig a medium sized hole, yeah. well, there's a there's certain things you gotta do. You know, you got to um, you got to simulate. You know, if you really wanna if you really wanna go about it right, you got to um, well, but see, as a process person, I would have thought that you would have set your criteria a little bit more stringently in the beginning. Right. Yeah. And and that's the part that I felt like probably this is intentional, you know, as, as part of the process. But, you know, that's that's what my reaction was when I watched it. Yeah, well, you and I know what it really takes to dig a medium-sized hole, but... And most, I have not done it. Most everyone else. But you would say you know. You and I have participated in the digging of a medium-sized hole at the beach. Okay. But we know what it really takes. Okay. But, the, but the average person just thinks you can go out there and do it. So, yeah, we had to just go out there and do it before to bring people along. It's true. It's like, hey, actually, this is a, there's a lot more to this. Especially in California. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you've been in Wyoming, it might oh, be yeah. completely different. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah, no, but it was fascinating. I look forward to the additional things that will be coming out of the Retin Link um, uh, channel over the coming weeks to months. I'm glad to hear you say that. We're very excited about it. Yeah, it, it was great. So let me um, bring up a couple of things. I know we have some other things to do. If you will close your eyes for just a moment. Okay. And I'm going to bring out This something. happens to me a lot. Like I know it does. And I, didn't bring, I didn't bring a, a blindfold today, so we're just going to bear with it here. And, and team, you can you can see what I'm holding here. As you can see, I can't. Yeah, no, he, he cannot. Okay, so I'm going to put it in your hand. And the question that I have for you is... Um, why would an industrial engineer have this item? Okay, so you can you may have it. Okay, and I'm still not going to open my eyes. No, you can do either one now. You can okay. you can start. Um, you know what? I'm gonna keep my eyes closed. This yeah. is a miniature remote control plane propeller. Fascinating. Now let me see. Yeah, that's the creativity, folks. So this is a fork spoon combination. Um, you can do better than. You've got words. This is a... What is Have this? you been gone from the South that long? I've never seen this. Uko? No, it's not the brand. Oh. It's, it's what it is. Well, it's a... It's a, it's a yes. I would call it a spork, yes. except that yes. there's a spoon down here. Okay. Right. So then I'm calling this a fork. Yeah, but I would have called it a spork. So no, I'm going to be able to... But you're correct. Oh, yeah, they are not... When there's a little so. bit of a... There's some serration on the edge of the fork so it's a little bit of a knife Ooh. fork mm-hmm. a nork i would call that a nork and i would call this a spoon okay all right um and i really like it yeah why do you why did you say that this is 
I haven't been in the South a while. Does everybody around here have these now? No, no. But didn't Kentucky Fried Chicken have sports for a while? And that's oh. where that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah this time. is not a sport. This is not, no, it's not this a, is a sport. Not a sport. You're correct. But it's that not. is not a typical fork either. I mean, you're you're correct though. My calling it with a sport is a gift? was wrong. It is a gift. Okay, good. Or and, is it because I asked? Now no, no, no. And not only that, but we have one like that is not branded correct. by IC oh. as well. So this is our. Newest. I love this. Yeah, it's great. So why do you so like I, it? Because I'm not going to throw it away. All right. I'm going to use it, and then I'm going to clean it with a minimal amount of resources. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, how much of this stuff is floating in the ocean? Not these, but like the. Yeah, the, no, exactly. This is great. This is great. Yeah. So why would an industrial engineer have this? AI didn't do very well on yeah. this one, by the way. So. The reason that we uh, chose to give this out when we um, give out some gifts recently is because of sustainability, yeah, efficiency and resources because you can reuse them and it's small enough to carry with you. I carry it with me a lot of the time. It was the I influence like of a of a staff member who um, had had seen one somewhere else and saw a good idea and adopted it because you know when you see a good idea, take it and and use it and. And take Preach full it. credit for yeah, it. Yeah, well, that too. But but tell everybody about it if uh, if they're willing to take it. So yeah, I'm willing to take it. Yeah. So we'll we'll um, we're giving you that, and you can think of. I'm not allowed to that, hold mm-hmm. knives. That is another um, reason. That, but uh, this is take. I don't know. This is like the most mm-hmm. innocuous knife I've ever seen. I think <laughs> that you would be allowed to have this one. Yeah, doesn't even cut anything. Yeah, no, I I thought that that one would be allowed for you. I did not check it with your team ahead of time, but. I'm, I'm going out on a limb and thinking they'll allow you to have it. Thank you for this. You're welcome. You're welcome. So a couple of other questions. Uh, so that that's efficient. It's effective. It's sustainable. All it, of those great things. It, it, it feeds you when you're hungry. It feeds you when you're hungry. And what better problem could an IE solve than feed you when you're hungry? So yeah, um, Maybe cancer. Oh, that's true. That's That'd be a great true. one. Yeah. Well, we do have, you know what we do have in this department? We have someone who focuses on biomanufacturing. Okay. Now, think cloning. about. Cloning. Pardon? You're talking about cloning? No. I'm talking about biomanufacturing from two standpoints. I'm thinking of the production of soft tissues for the human body for medical applications. Oh. So, ear cartilage or the knee meniscus when you have a oh. knee replacement or have something torn okay yeah neither one of those parts is very edible no that part is not but the other application is biomanufacturing of meat so i guess you could oh, yeah. but not cloning the whole sheep yeah just growing the meat in human laboratories meat. no oh not human meat meat from yeah. the cells of a that's exciting cow. Or it, it is exciting yeah. and what he is doing, so think about what Henry Ford did for car manufacturing in the early 1900s yeah. and figured out the process to scale everything up and right. reduce the cost so it became affordable for many. So that's what that team is working on. That's an unusual problem where industrial engineers are also contributing. I love that. Yeah, great, isn't it? All right, so I have a few other questions and then we'll be done. Folks, I'm delighted that you're here with us. We are here with Link of Rhett and Link. And that's right. Link is a graduate of Industrial and Systems Engineering from North Carolina State University. A few remaining questions. My apologies to Stephen Colbert and his team. Have you seen the St- Stephen Colbert questionnaire? Uh-uh. Well, we're going to give you a different version. Oh, okay. I don't know if his writers are on strike right now, but Probably. we we took, uh, took yep. that. And, and so these are just quick answers, right? Okay. Um, Favorite word? Favorite word uh, today. Um, However you want to answer. Persnickety. Oh, that's a good Persnickety. One. That's a good one. Least favorite word? Um, glom. Glom? Glom. Glom. Like the verb. Okay, yeah. You glom on to something. Okay, all right. And you're gloming on. What sound or noise do you love? Um, the the most satisfying sound on the planet, the opening of a cold canned beverage. <laughs> there is something about that sound. <laughs> I would ask Coke or Pepsi, but neither one have sponsored our video today. Yeah, we're not going to say. We're going to say. It's just just out a enough. can of your choice. We could generate a deep fake to provide the answer to that later if someone wants to sponsor. Uh, apple or orange? 
Orange. Water, still or sparkling? Sparkling. Oh, yes, that was correct. Is there something that Rhett does better than you? I'm sure there probably is. Is there something you do better than Rhett? Definitely. What? Um, um, what does he do better than me? Uh, you know, I was talking about writing earlier. I think he's a better writer than me. Um, I think I am a better... I'm a better editor than him. Okay. We'll just go with those two. All right, that'll be fine. Uh, those were not the ones that AI came up with, but that's perfectly fine. Well, so AI told you what, like, answers for me? For both of you. Well, what are they? I don't know. Oh, well, the, I, I don't know if we have time. If we're gonna, we're, We don't have time. Uh, I will tell you those offline, and okay. you can tell me what you think about them. Um, last question. This is the very last one. You get to keep your IE degree. Give us a Wolfpack ears. What? Hold on. Say that again. You say I do get to get. I, I get, get to keep, keep your degree. Give us Wolfpack ears. If I just do this. Yes. Double yes. up. Yes. Yep. And, and your, and your ears are properly high. All right. Go Wolfpack. Thank you for joining yes, us go today. Wolfpack. Thank you for Ian Price and Wanda Urbanska for helping us. Thank you, Lee Neal, for your speech today at commencement. Best commencement ever. My pleasure. And we are. We will see you again sometime. Thank you.